about four years ago, I started experiencing a lot of congestion in my lungs. And I'm a, a veteran, so I use some of the VA health services. And one of the nurses there picked up this, uh, this irregular heartbeat. I didn't actually realize that I was pretty sick and my heart was operating at less than 30% efficiency. So Mr. Siegel came to us and he was in atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation is an irregular heartbeat. In atrial fibrillation, the top chambers, the atrium, start beating very chaotically and erratically. This causes the heart to lose its ability to function optimally. Consequently, patients feel short of breath, fatigued, tired, they have palpitations. If it's untreated, blood clots can form in the heart and these blood clots can cause strokes. Up to 25% of all strokes in this country are caused by atrial fibrillation. But however, in terms of preventing atrial fibrillation and stopping it from recurring, there are medications we can use which are called rhythm control drugs. But they don't work. They don't even work 50% of the time. There's a procedure that's called catheter ablation. That's where we thread a catheter up through the veins into the heart and we try to target the triggers where the atrial fibrillation is starting. The University of Miami U Health System was part of Cabano, which was a multi-center landmark study comparing catheter ablation with medications in patients with atrial fibrillation. This was the largest atrial fibrillation study in quite some time, and they picked the best centers around the world, and we were fortunate to be included in that group. In this study, 2,200 patients were randomized to either receive catheter ablation or medication. My participation would be a contribution to uh, this whole question of what is the best way to address the type of condition that I had. In the Cabana study, it showed that in terms of reduction of atrial fibrillation and prevention of atrial fibrillation, that uh, ablation definitely outperformed medication. It was at least 40% better in terms of prevention of atrial fibrillation. It was a very, very uh, uplifting feeling that uh, I still had some life rewards ahead of me, and that has been, in fact, the case for me. With the results of the Cabana study, we can look at patients more carefully, and we can discuss the pros and cons of undergoing a catheter ablation.